Welcome to the recorded version of Medication Management, part of the Family Caregiver Support Webinar Series brought to you by the American Society on Aging and a generous sponsorship from Home Instead Senior Care. Okay, we got two presenters here with us today. Kyle Decker received his Doctor of Pharmacy degree from Butler University. He is Six Sigma certified and has developed concepts into operational processes to provide a safer way for patients to self-administer medications. Throughout his career, Kyle has been at the forefront of driving medication adherence, medication synchronization, customized, customized patient packaging, proactive refill processes, and other tools that empower patients with multiple disease states and complex profiles. Lakeland Hogan is a gerontologist and caregiver advocate for Home and Senior Care. Lakeland works to educate professionals, families, and communities on issues older adults face. Lakeland is a doctoral candidate at the University of Nebraska Omaha, where she is studying social gerontology. She has a Master of Arts in Social Gerontology and a Master's in Business Administration from UNO. Lakeland has professional experience in the private and public sectors of senior care services. She has worked on special projects for UNO's Department of Gerontology and the local area agency on aging. Lakeland serves as Vice President of the Board of Directors for the Dreamweaver Foundation and is active in the Alzheimer's Association's Walk to End Alzheimer's. Lakeland has a passion for helping others, especially aging adults and their families. And with that, I'm going to turn the floor over to Lakeland and Kyle. Thanks for being here today. Thank you so much, Steve. Hello, everyone. Thank you all for tuning in. I hope your Wednesday is off to a great start. Today, Kyle and I will be talking about an important topic that is vital to the health of older adults, and that's medication management. And I know it's been a significant issue for many of the seniors I've worked with over the years, and I can imagine that you're dealing with many medication management issues in the older adult populations that you serve as well. Medication management is a bit ironic as these remedies can save lives, but if they're not managed properly, medications have the potential to sicken uh, or even, unfortunately, uh, kill older adults if not taken pro properly. Oftentimes, medication management is a difficult topic to broach because it is so personal and something that many older adults have taken care of on their own for a very long time. And we're going to dive a little bit deeper into that. Uh, so the um, psychological side of it in just a little bit um, throughout today's presentation. And while I've worked with older adults and their families in regards to medication management, I did want to enlist the expert um, advice and um, information of Kyle. Um, he is a pharmacist joining us. He works at Simple Meds, which is a fantastic medication management solution and one that I often recommend to families. So uh, I I'm excited to have Kyle on, and he'll be talking in just a little bit um, about some specific um, tools and resources. But before we get started, I'm going to qu quickly go over some of our objectives. So I hope by the end of this presentation, you'll be able to identify the potential risks associated with medication mismanagement, uh, then understand common medication challenges that older adults face, and then the signs to watch for when medications might be the blame for health issues. And then we're also going to talk about specific common conditions and how it relates to medication management. And then we want to help strengthen the role of the family in reducing the potential for these medication risks. And finally, I want to leave you with some resources that will help the families you work with and the older adults you work with feel more confident and safe about medication management. So I think it's always interesting to look at a little bit of research, so we're going to start with that. It might be surprising to you, or it might not, but over 100,000 seniors in North America end up in the hospital each year because of medication problems. Uh, Home Instead Inc. conducted a survey where we interviewed a random sample of 500 seniors in the U.S. and Canada to identify their perceptions and habits regarding medication safety, and we found that the number, as the number of prescription medications increased for older adults age 70 plus, so did the potential for medication management challenges and potential health risks. And we also found that about 20% of surveyed older adults have some difficulty managing their medications. And in fact, nearly one in five seniors surveyed felt overwhelmed at least occasionally by the amount of medications they're taking. And one in 10 reported that they do not 
take their medications as directed. Can you think of anyone that you work with or in your life that might modify the recommend, recommended medication regimen? Um, I know I've, I've worked with a few. So um, for seniors who are taking multiple medications, Almost a fourth of those surveyed, uh, they don't know if they have a list of the medications that they're currently taking. Um, so we know that that is very important, especially because older adults are oftentimes seeing multiple prescribing practitioners or physicians, healthcare professionals. So if they don't have a current list of what they're taking and they're not able to provide it to all of those different healthcare professionals, it increases the risk for adverse drug reactions, uh, over-medicating, and so forth, and we'll talk more about that. Um, but again, I just wanted to kind of recap. So the more meds that an older adult is taking, the more likely they are to have challenges, which puts them at risk for this medication mismanagement. And then the seniors themselves are admitting that uh, their medication management routine can be somewhat overwhelming. So um, we just need to keep that in mind as we're working with seniors. We don't always want to assume that they um, are knowledgeable on their medications, that they have a good routine in place. We want to make sure that we're providing them with some great resources to make that easier for them, help them troubleshoot um, issues, create a solution that works for them. We also have found that when it comes to unintentional medication mistakes, one in 10 seniors have unintentionally made a mistake when taking their medication. And of those that made mistakes, 11% of those have had a medical issue or emergency room visit as a result of, those, of, of that medication mistake. We've also found that a, uh, just over half of seniors in North America are taking four or more prescription medications on a daily basis. And then another fourth are taking six or more medications. So again, we know older adults are taking a higher number of medications than the average American. Um, and again, that increases the risk that the pure number of medications they're taking can increase the risk. And then when you start to add in uh, maybe cognitive impairment or some chronic conditions, which we're gonna go over soon, those uh, risks continue to climb. So on the next slide, we're going to talk a little bit about some of these medication management concerns. So at least half of those surveyed said that they don't have conversations with their families on a regular basis about medications. But the good news is, is they do agree it's important. Um, and about half of seniors surveyed uh, say they don't want to talk about it because they don't want to burden their family with uh, potential medication issues. However, for those that do talk about it, over half of those respondents felt that communication with their family members increased their confidence around their medication management, also put kind of the family's mind at ease, that they've had discussions, they know what's going on. So being able to talk about um, medication management concerns among family members is important, and it also helps uh, the older adult maintain their independence. Um, if they're able to manage their medications on their own, uh, maybe it can help them stay at home longer, help them stay healthier longer. Uh, I've seen a lot of people, unfortunately, um, move to an assisted living facility mainly because they offered medication management uh, for older adults. So if we can get families talking about medication management and the options, we're able to help the older adults stay more independent and probably remain at home longer especially if that's the goal of the older adults. So all of this research really just confirms how problematic medication management can be. So we're going to look um, at more of the challenges here on the next slide. So um, one of the biggest medication management challenges is medication adherence. And this occurs when a patient is taking their medications according to the prescribed dosage time, frequency, and direction. And a breakdown in any one of those elements has the potential to result in unanticipated side effects or complications. So poor medication management adherence or non-adherence limits the effectiveness of management and control of chronic illnesses and diseases. And non-adherence also increases the likelihood of preventable 
disease progression, increased hospitalizations, avoidable doctor's appointments, emergency room visits, and other problems that could arise from poor health. Uh, it could also significantly increase the older adult's medical costs. So if they are just able to uh, ad adhere to those medication regimens, uh, you know, all of those risks could be reduced. But we do know that it's um, an issue and a challenge. And for, for many, um, getting timely refills is kind of a, a barrier or an additional challenge to medication adherence. And according to the National Consumers League, 20 to 30 percent of medications prescribed never go filled. So while older adults are they're going to their physicians, they're making those appointments, um, some aren't, aren't uh, fulfilled fulfilling those prescriptions that the doctors are prescribing. And another key factor is remembering to take the medications. Medication rates, uh, or adherence rates, pardon me, drop, tend to drop after the first six months. So half of patients um, do not take the medication as prescribed. They might take um, the medication for a while and they start getting to feeling better and then they'll stop taking the medication, um, but then they'll kind of go back to feeling the way they were prior to the medication. So it's kind of a, a vicious cycle for some older adults, um, but remembering to take those medications um, is important. But we find that um, adherence is lowest among those that have chronic conditions, which are the conditions and illnesses that usually you know, need the most medication treatment. And we're going to talk about some of those chronic conditions later on. According to the Journal of Medical Internet Research, another common challenge is that older adults want to remain independent and in control of their medication and treatment decisions. And there are certain medications uh, that are considered a, a threat to the older adult's autonomy. Uh, it might be detrimental to their cognition or their health. Some older adults are assertive in seeking information on their medication uh, and their management of their medications. They actively monitor their health. They alter their medication regimens according to the physician's recommendations. Some people tend to develop elaborate systems. I've walked into homes where there are pillboxes. Some have envelopes or little Dixie cups. They have a little system for themselves. Um, and then there are some that really struggle with this issue. There might be 10 pill bottles on the table and three of those are the same exact medication that they just keep getting refilled and haven't taken. Um, so uh, when we talk about medication management and creating solutions, some older adults might kind of put up a front or they might be a little resistant because of this independence issue. Uh, and then another uh, challenge or worry that older adults might have is that they're taking too much medication. Many express, ex express concerns about being over-medicated. They might be skeptical uh, of the rationale or benefits for adding another medication to their medication routine already. And particularly um, if it's another medication for the same condition. So for example, hypertension. They're already taking a hypertension med and the doc wants to add a second medication. Um, they might be skeptical, which could be for very good reason. Um, but again, that could be a challenge or barrier to the medication management routine. And some want to reduce the amount of medications that they're taking. They might be worried that their body can't handle all of these medications. So in those cases, we definitely want to encourage the older adult to talk with their physician, um, a pharmacist, about, you know, are these medications, uh, what purpose are they serving? Uh, and if, if being on too many medications is a concern, talk to the doctor about possibilities for reducing the number of medications. And then some are concerned about drug interactions and perceive, again, that these doctors are just layering on medications instead of simplifi simplifying the medication routine. Um, and they might be concerned about the unnecessary costs uh, that adding another medication has. Um, healthcare expenses, we know, unfortunately, in the U.S. Are, are high and older adults are on a limited income. So that might present a challenge in that um, worry of taking on too many medications. And then miscommunication. I mentioned earlier that uh, older adults often see multiple doctors, specialists, nurse practitioners, a PA here. So um, they might assume that all of these doctors' computer systems are talking to one another. And for some health systems, that might be the case. But uh, we want to make sure that 
the older adult is keeping a, a well-kept record of their medications that they're taking uh, and inform all of the physicians that are involved in the care of the older adult, um, of, inform them of the medication list. And then um, another challenge that we see is adverse effects or the side effects, again, that drug interaction that can occur, can be a challenge for older adults. So uh, these negative side effects can cause maybe them to stop taking their medication. I was working with an older adult who started a new medication. It made her feel really dizzy, um, and so she just stopped taking it altogether. And I asked her uh, if she had talked to her physician before she stopped taking the medication, and she said, nope, I just stopped taking it altogether. I, I didn't want to feel dizzy, and I didn't want to feel nauseous. So uh, I encouraged her to, you know, let's call the physician, talk to them about the side effects, um, and they were able to prescribe another somewhat comparable drug that uh, wasn't having those side effects. So um, these adverse uh, effects, these side effects, drug interactions, it's important that um, if a family is sensing that these are occurring, that they talk to the physician, uh, the pharmacist immediately, uh, because we do know that these adverse drug reactions can lead to hospitalizations. In fact, about 15% of hospitalizations of people over the age of 65 in the U.S. are related to an adverse drug reaction. So um, these can even be fatal in some very extreme cases. So it's really important um, that, that good communication is had, um, especially when side effects. Are, are a concern. And then there's just a few more challenges here on this next slide. So oftentimes, older adults, when they go to the doctor's office, we know doctors some have, in some practices, a limited amount of time that they can spend with, with the patient in the room. So they might have a fear of asking too many questions. They don't want to take up the doctor's time. They know they're busy. And I know, personally, sometimes I go to the doctor and they're talking so quickly and they say, okay, I'm going to prescribe you this. Do you have any questions? And before I can even stop and process what medication they prescribed, I find myself saying, no, I don't have any questions. And then I leave the doctor's office and think of about 12 questions I should have asked. So uh, older adults might have that fear, but we want to reassure them um, that, you know, even if you have questions after you leave the doctor's office, you can always give them a call, the pharmacy a call. A lot of times they don't want to look silly or they, again, don't want to bother the healthcare professionals. Um, but we, we need to reassure them that, you know, their health, their medication regimen is important and that their questions are valid. Another, again, sad reality, I mentioned this kind of already, is the high cost of medication. And again, for those on a limited income, they might have to choose between purchasing food or uh, other necessities versus paying for a prescription. So uh, they might maybe refill it not as frequently. They might fail to refill the prescription med altogether due to the cost. And they, um, again, will have, in some cases, um, some additional health issues because they have stopped taking their medications. So uh, we do need to keep that in the back of our minds. And a lot of companies, uh, drug companies, might have coupons or doctor's offices might have samples. So there are some ways uh, that if, if cost is of a concern, um, just talking with the doctor's office, the pharmacy, there might be a solution for them. And then another challenge is not taking medication in the proper way. You might be chewing the pills, cutting them. Uh, there might be a dosage error. Perhaps they're taking too many or too few. They fail to read those labels really closely. Um, they might take it at the wrong time of day. Or they might not realize that you need to take this pill with food, and they instead take it early in the morning right when they wake up uh, without eating. So uh, especially for those that have difficulty with swallowing, instead of reaching out to the doctor or the pharmacist to see is that if there's an alternate form of the prescription, they'll just go ahead and crush it up and put it maybe in some applesauce, or they'll chew the pill, which for some some medications, uh, it can be uh, harmful to the older adult because some are kind of on a time release, um, those types of things. So we want to, especially if, if on the outside bottle it says do not crush or do not chew, contact the medical professional to see if there's an alternate form. And then another challenge um, that goes kind of hand in hand with that independence issue that I mentioned earlier is that older adults don't want to be a bother to their family members. 
when I work with, a lot of times I see uh, the, the adult child going over to their loved one's house once a week to fill the Mediset um, when their loved one is having some kind of medication management issues. So they don't, the older adult doesn't want to be a burden to the older adult child. Uh, they want to be able to manage the medication on their own. But we know uh, in cases where there is cognitive impairment uh, or maybe some dexterity issues with their hands, um, their eyesight ability to read the labels, when those start to become challenges, sometimes the family does need to step in. And it doesn't mean that it's limiting their independence, uh, but the family just, again, needs to think about their approach when discussing these types of issues. And then the last challenge is, again, in, in regards to the number of medications that we take. So I mentioned earlier, four more when there are four more medications involved, uh, the adherence to the medication um, is at risk. So uh, when there's multiple pills, it's sometimes hard to manage, can be confusing, difficult. So we need to make sure that we're helping older adults manage that effectively. So now that we know some of the challenges, there's also some signs to look for when medications might be to blame for health issues. So when distinguishing between a medication's side effect or reaction and an illness, um, it's a process, of course, best left to the professionals. But uh, there's a geriatric physician at the Home Instead Center for Successful Aging at the University of Nebraska Medical Center, Dr. Jane Potter. And she's come up with kind of 10 signs to look out for uh, that we can, we can coach families through. So the first is any new symptoms. Um, so after any new medication is started, um, families should be on the lookout for any sort of symptom. Maybe it's dizziness, nausea, or if these symptoms kind of pop up out of the blue. There's been no medication changes, but all of a sudden there's a reaction. Um, then we need to make sure that that older adult is getting to the physician with a full medication list of everything they're taking. Another um, thing to look out for are changes in appearances. Medication problems can sometimes cause skin tone or changes or changes in the person's coloring. Perhaps there's more lethargy. Uh, there's a body weight fluctuation. Maybe they're re retaining fluid or losing weight really rapidly. If any of these changes are occurring, we want to make sure that the family is getting that older adult to see their physician. Another sign to look out for is those full pill bottles. We've been talking about uh, how some aren't, aren't filled, but even if they are filled, they might not be uh, taken. So family members, they can just kind of tune into uh, the level of the pill bottles, maybe check to see when that prescription was filled. Um, it can help to indicate if maybe there's an issue. If the full pill bottle from two months ago um, is still sitting there, maybe it's time for a conversation. Mobility issues might also be a sign. If all of a sudden, again, dizziness, lightheadedness becomes an issue, it might be a potential side effect of the medication, especially in those that are used to treat blood pressure. And those side effects could further limit their mobility, uh, especially if somebody uh, is already suffering um, from a chronic condition that limits their mobility, such as maybe arthritis. Uh, so we want to make sure that, um, of course, the older adult's home is, is uh, safe and a safe environment for them to get around in. Um, but if you're noticing additional mobility issues, uh, especially after the start of a new medication, we want to make sure that, again, the physician is called. And then if there's changes in the person's thinking, reasoning, mental activity, it could be, uh, the medication could be the cause of this forgetfulness or confusion, or it might cause um, some other issues within the body. So if all of a sudden there's a change in the person's um, mental state of any kind, and it kind of comes on all of a sudden, again, make a call to the older adult's physician. So we'll continue on with Dr. Potter's 10 warning signs. Next is difficulty in performing activities of daily living. So those activities of daily living could be their bathing, their ability to dress themselves, toy go to the bathroom or use a toilet on their own, their eating habits, those sorts of things. So if, if those activities of daily living, if you start to notice changes in those, it could be a potential side effect of the medication. And then trouble sleeping. 
We know that sometimes older adults have issues with sleep in general, uh, but some prescription drugs, including antidepressants, could potentially lead to insomnia or the need for sleep medications. So definitely encourage the older adult to talk to the physician about ways to avoid uh, sleep-related side effects or ways to um, manage those side effects. And another is a change in appetite. Um, sometimes maybe a steroid medication could increase hunger or might be a medication might be an appetite suppressant. So if this starts to impact the older adult's weight gain or loss, uh, if you're starting to notice changes, that's a good time to talk to the physician. And then um, it might also cause some difficulty in man maintaining the home. So especially if a medication is causing uh, lethargy, they're really tired, they just don't have the energy to keep their house clean, prepare the nutritious meals for themselves, get out and about to run their errands. Again, these are signs to be on the lookout for. Um, make sure that medications aren't to blame for these types of things. And then uh, they're overall overall well-being, we just want to keep an eye on that. So if the medication is not taken correctly, um, taken correctly, it can really affect the older adult's entire well-being. So again, best practice for families is making sure that their loved ones' medications are reviewed at least annually, um, but I would encourage families every time they go to a doctor's office uh, to just have that current medication list and always be updating it as things are added or taken away. And even include those vitamins, over-the-counter uh, medications that they're taking on a regular basis. So again, these are the 10 signs from Dr. Potter that medications could be to blame for health issues. But there are certain chronic conditions that might more specifically impact um, medication management. So I did want to go over those now. So as I talk about each of these, I'm going to talk about the risks, some signs to look out for, and then some possible solutions. So the first uh, chronic condition is arthritis. And if you tuned in to our May webinar, we had um, a gentleman from the Arthritis Foundation on. We, and we on that webinar talked about how there's over 100 different types of arthritis-related conditions. And about one of every five older adults in the US has a doctor diagnosed arthritis. And oftentimes, this can result in taking medication for arthritis pain, um, and it could have potential side effects. For, for some se seniors, the use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or NSAIDs, uh, could lead to stomach problems, uh, heart problems, kidney damage, and taking a steroid drug might increase the risk of bone thinning, weight gain, and diabetes. So again, these are things that uh, families will want to just be conscious of, ask the physician about. And then the pain from arthritis can really uh, prompt individuals with the condition to look for, for solutions to ease kind of that suffering and pain, which is completely understandable. But we want to be sure that the older adult is, is discussing these options with the doctor. Uh, it could be anything from the benefits of exercise, like a water therapy or physical therapy, but even those like topical rubs or the hot, cold packs, um, which can bring relief, uh, we just want to double check that that uh, the doctor is kind of giving the okay, the thumbs up on those types of, of um, remedies for chronic, this chronic condition of arthritis. And then when it comes to the medication management, making sure that the older adult can open the pill bottle or utilize their medication management system properly. And we're gonna talk about a couple solutions, simple meds, Kai will probably mention that later, is a great option for someone with arthritis. Or even just flipping the cap on the prescription bottle upside down. Um, a lot of times that can help ease um, the amount of effort that somebody has to put forth to open the pill bottle. And then uh, COPD uh, is another chronic condition that we see oftentimes in older adults. Uh, it is a disease that in the lungs that obstructs the airflow uh, and can cause shortness of breath and coughing. And although COPD can be treated effectively with a variety of medications, doctors do um, oftentimes bring up the risk of side effects of these types of medications. And in people with COPD, it's important to watch out for any weight gain. Um, and then if there are other 
chronic conditions that are paired with it, diabetes, osteoporosis, if there's cataract issues, um, potential for infections. Again, these can just increase the risks um, and side effects that come along with the treatment of COPD. So we just want family members to be on the lookout. Uh, and someone with COPD really should be under a close doctor observation uh, since the changes in medication and diet can really have um, or really trigger some potential side effects. So um, when it comes to the medication options for COPD, a lot of times inhalers, pills, syrups, those types of things are prescribed. And it's just important that the older adult keeps well maintained records of their medications and when they should be taking, taken pardon me, to effectively manage their COPD. Diabetes is another chronic condition, um, and oftentimes insulin and oral drugs are uh, some of the top uh, treatments for diabetes, but we do know that um, ineffective management of diabetes can lead to a lot of emergency room visits. And actually, um, according to the CDC, uh, that chronic condition results in, in higher numbers of hospitalizations that could otherwise be avoided with effective medication management. So the side effects of using diabetes medications can really run the gamut from nausea and diarrhea to cold and flu-like symptoms. And there might be potential reactions to insulins um, or pills. Blood sugar can also, low blood sugar, pardon me, can also uh, cause some side effects of confusion or in some extreme cases, even unconsciousness. So again, these are things families need to be on the lookout for. And keep regularly scheduled doctor's appointments uh, and make sure that the older adult's dosage is appropriate um, when it comes to the insulin or the pills, especially if there's been a weight gain or weight loss, um, really can impact the amount of medication that the older adult should be taking. So um, with diabetes, we want to make sure that the older adult is maintaining their, their blood sugar levels as much as possible at the healthy rate that the doctor recommends. And if there are blood sugar issues, it could be very helpful for the families to keep a diary of insulin levels and how much insulin is given, and then bring those to appointments just to help give the the healthcare professionals a more accurate picture of what's going on on a day-to-day -day basis, even kind of hour-to-hour -hour basis in some, in some cases. And then heart disease, we know that's a chronic condition. Um, about every 43 seconds in the U.S., someone has a heart attack. So and that's according to the American Heart Association. And that's just one of, of course, many of the different heart conditions that we, can, we tend to see in older adults. Uh, but because the treatments for heart disease uh, might vary, the risks could, um, or the, pardon me, the side effects could look different depending on the medication that's prescribed. Uh, but someone on heart medications should check in with the doctor every time a medication is added, even if it's not related to the heart condition. We want to make sure, again, that there's no adverse drug reactions that could occur. And then stroke. Uh, it's the fifth leading cause of death and a leading cause of disability in the United States, and that's according to the American Stroke Association. So uh, if a person has suffered a stroke, the potential risks for not following prescribed medication could really be hazardous to their health and well-being. So missing blood, blood, medic, um, pardon me, blood pressure medications um, and the mismanagement of those um, can further increase the risk of having additional strokes in some individuals. So again, really, really important, especially those on medications like warfarin, to make sure that they're getting the accurate dosage levels um, for, for their individual situation. And then uh, we also have some kind of mental and memory conditions that also can impact uh, medication management for older adults. So um, the first is Alzheimer's and dementia. While there currently is no cure for Alzheimer's and many of the dementias or, and dementia, uh, medication is available for um, some individuals that could help slow, um, sorry, help reduce the number of behavioral symptoms um, that, that the individual with dementia is having, such as memory loss, confusion, problems with thinking and reasoning. So um, 
there are some medications out there that, that an older adult might be prescribed. And as the disease progresses, those living with dementia might experience more medication management issues. And I have the whole next slide dedicated to that topic. So I'm going to jump on to depression and we'll circle back to dementia in just a moment. But for depression, um, most mental health experts agree that when depression is severe enough um, to impact the function of the, the older adult's daily life, medication might be helpful. So, um, but we do know that in older adults, antidepressants could also increase the risk for falls, fractures, and bone loss. So we do, again, need to be tuned in to the side, potential side effects and issues that come along with antidepressant prescriptions. Um, and they could also cause nausea, an increased appetite, weight gain, insomnia, and constipation. So those are some common side effects that we see. And it's important to consult with a doctor whether uh, an antidepressant is the correct solution or if counseling might be um, a good option. But if an older adult decides to stop taking an antidepressant, it's really important to consult the physician and taper off the medication because it can kind of be a, a shock to the system and cause some unpleasant withdrawal symptoms if it's not um, tapered off in some cases. And then anxiety. Up until a few years ago, uh, anxiety disorder disorders were believed to decline with age, but experts now recognize that anxiety is as common among older adults as it is among young adults. And in fact, many older adults with anxiety disorder had one when they were younger, and that's according to the Anxiety and Depression Association of America. So it's important that medication at the right doses is, is prescribed if the doctor or physician feels that the anxiety needs to be treated and that there's not any adverse drug reactions that could cause harm to the older adult's health, safety, well-being. So I do want to circle back quickly to dementia and medication management. Uh, when I was reading through uh, the, re the comments from last year's medication webinar, people were asking lots of questions on medication management for those living with Alzheimer's and dementia. So I did want to provide you all with some more kind of practical tips on medication management uh, for someone with dementia. And dementia really affects everyone differently. Uh, dementia is the umbrella term. Alzheimer's is the most common form of dementia, uh, but there are other kinds of dementia, Lewy body dementia, um, frontal temporal dementia, vascular dementia. But again, Alzheimer's is the most common, so you often hear that referred to more frequently. But m most all dementias are a progressive disease that will eventually require an older adult to need uh, assistance with their activities of daily living, including medication management. Um, so when um, administering medication to an individual living with Alzheimer's or dementia, especially if they're in the moderate and late stages, there are some tips and techniques that can make medication management um, more successful. For those that are in more of the early stage, they might still be able to manage their medication on their own. But if there is some sort of diagnosis, that's something family members will want to watch pretty closely, is their medication management. But for somebody more in the moderate to late stages of the disease, when you're talking with the person uh, who has dementia, you want to be sure that you make eye contact so the individual knows you're talking specifically to them. And then you'll want to approach them from the front so that they can see you coming. If you think about it, if somebody comes up and taps you on the shoulder from behind, you might get a little startled. So you want to make sure that you're in their line of vision, they know that you're there to talk to them to possibly administer their medication. And then if they're sitting in a wheelchair or in a chair, it might be helpful to get down on their level and talk directly to them. And also just give them time to respond. For some, it takes longer to process the words that they're hearing and then think of a way to respond. So if you're there to give them your medications or ask them a question, you might want to give just six to seven seconds for that person to respond because you might, you might find that um, if you just pause, they will respond to, to the question and the information. If the person uh, refuses to take their medications, uh, remain calm. Avoid getting frustrated because it will only escalate the situation. And then you might try redirecting them to a different activity and trying to administer 
administer the medication at a later time. It could be um, redirecting them to the kitchen for a snack and then trying to administer the medication again. Um, but if you try to convince them to take it in that moment, you might be met with even more resistance. And it's important to explain what you're doing before you do it. So instead of just plopping uh, medication in their hand uh, and expecting them to know what to do with it, you might give simple explanations. Um, Hello, I'm here to give you your morning meds, and here is a glass of water to wash it down with. Just again, explaining uh, so that they're not left guessing, because they, while to you taking medication might seem like a normal part of their routine, they may have forgotten that that's something that they do every day. And then it may help to really be specific in describing the objects instead, or the medications instead of calling them by name. So instead of, oh, here's your warfarin pill, you might say, oh, um, here's that round yellow pill that you take every day, or um, the big white pill that you take in the morning. Being more descriptive might help um, to put their mind at ease. And then often demonstrating the activity can help create visual cues. So if you, uh, for example, tell them to place the pill in their mouth and then you sh um, kind of give them, I wish you could see me because I'm demonstrating it here as I sit, but uh, pretend to put pills in your mouth and then pretend to have a glass of water and drink your glass of water, it can visually cue them uh, to know what to do with the pills and the glass of water. Again, uh, they may not know uh, what to do with those items. And then using simple instructions. So instead of saying, okay, let's go take your meds, um, they might not know where the medications are, they might not know what to take. So for example, instead you could say, okay, let's go to the kitchen, and then once you're in there uh, and you have the pill bottles out, you could say, okay, let's open this pill bottle, give them an opportunity to do that. Okay, let's take out one pill. Okay, now it's time to take that pill. So again, breaking it down into easy steps uh, can really be um, helpful. And then, again, pausing. Uh, you can use that to emphasize what you're saying. For example, do you take this medication in the morning? Pause or at night. It gives them a chance to, again, process. And then finally, again, don't argue with, with someone who has dementia. It really gets you nowhere. Um, and sometimes it's just easier to take the blame. So if, uh, if they're upset with you, uh, maybe they drop the pills um, instead of you. Uh, instead, you could just take the blame. I'm so sorry, I dropped your pills. Let me clean them up and, and get you a new set. Or I'm so sorry, I must have misplaced the medications. And even if it wasn't your fault, uh, it can really just put them at ease. So those are some quick hitting tips on dementia and medication management. So I hope that those have been helpful. And now I'm going to pass it over to Kyle. Um, he has some great tips um, on how to avoid some medication mistakes. Thanks, Lakeland. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, uh, it's great to be here. So let's uh, go ahead and talk about avoiding medication mistakes. Um, the first thing I want to do is just consider a frequent scenario that I see um, very frequently in the pharmacy, and it's about a senior that um, has always managed their medications very well, um, but just recently had a bout with congestive heart failure. The doctor prescribed a diuretic to eliminate the fluid. Um, it worked and he got better. Um, so he quit taking the medication as a result of, of feeling better uh, without consulting his physician. You know, it was one less pill for him to remember to take, and so he viewed the prescription as temporary when actually it was intended for prolonged use. Soon after, uh, the senior stops taking the medication, they end up back in the hospital right where they started with CHF uh, exacerbation once again. Uh, so there's several things in this scenario that we can uh, take and, and learn from. So how do we avoid medication mistakes? The first thing, uh, the easiest thing, oftentimes the first step is to get a pill organizer, uh, some sort of service or system. Um, you know, we've all seen the, the breakfast, lunch, dinner, bedtime, uh, four compartment daily uh, pill organizer. That's a great way to start. Um, sometimes that works for people. Oftentimes the problem is it still has to be set up by someone, so the mistakes can be uh, made in that situation. So oftentimes we'll we'll ask individuals to um, start a service such as Simple Meds. Uh, sometimes local pharmacies will package medications for seniors. Um, essentially what we do at Simple Meds is we sort the medications uh, that sh are supposed to be taken according to the date and the time into multi-dose packets. So a customer may have a morning packet, a lunch packet, and a bedtime packet. 
Um, and then that way, you know, there's somebody there managing the medications for an individual that's, that's struggling with that. Uh, the second thing is to make one doctor the gatekeeper to manage the medications. Oftentimes we see um, older adults have multiple doctors, an endocrinologist, a primary care physician, a cardiologist, and most people assume that doctors communicate with one another about medications, but that's not the reality of the medical world that we live in. Um, doctors are, are, are very busy. Oftentimes the, the staff on, in the office doesn't have time to communicate with other doctors, so they rely on on the caregiver or the the patient themselves to notify them of what medications other doctors are prescribing. So as Lakeland mentioned, always bring a list of medications or I'll even tell uh, individuals to take the actual medication bottles so that the doctor can cross-reference and make sure that they're not prescribing something that's already on board the profile or interacts with the profile. The next one is to know why um, the loved one or the senior is taking the medication. What specific conditions or symptoms was it prescribed to alleviate? Um, and making sure that you understand, your, your senior can read and understand the medication instructions. These are all very basic things likely to you and I, but can often be confusing um, and lead to um, individuals not taking their medications because they don't know what it's for. Um, and then also just make sure that that you uh, or the senior is aware of any potential side effects for that medication because um, you know those can those can uh, impact adherence as well. Uh, the next one is to call the doctor about any changes in how the senior is thinking, feeling, or looking. Oftentimes, people have a sense of when they feel different, especially after taking a, a, a new medication or a change in medication. But also consider that um, reactions to medications can develop after years of taking the same medication. So uh, always bringing those to, to the attention of the, the healthcare provider is important. Um, and the last one on this slide is to keep reg regularly scheduled appointments. Uh, it's very important to keep an open dialogue with your physician, keeping appointments, um, because they oftentimes will not refill medications when they're due because of missed appointments. Um, you know, th there, there are a lot of things that could happen there by not keeping a reg regularly scheduled appointment, not only on the physician side, but on the patient side as well, um, not notifying the, patient or the physician of, of ongoing things. So on the next slide, there's a few more uh, ways to avoid medication mistakes. The first one is if um, there's a barrier to paying for the medications. You need to talk to a pharmacist, talk to a doctor about alternatives that can be um, prescribed because uh, the biggest deterrent, uh, the biggest barrier to medication adherence is cost. So um, if, if, if someone's struggling to pay, with their medic pay for their medication, um, uh, pharmaceutical companies offer discounts for brand name products oftentimes, and, and if that's not an option, then generic alternatives within the same therapeutic category can be prescribed. The next one is to tell your healthcare provider if a senior is depressed. As Lakeland mentioned, this, is, this can be a real barrier to medication adherence, so make sure that you're always letting your doctor know if, if you feel like um, your loved one's depressed. Uh, the next one is to discuss any problems an older adult has taking medication. So Lakeland mentioned this a little bit as well. I'll build upon that, but you know there are solutions for some medication challenges. Uh, liquid can be prescribed instead of um, uh, maybe a large pill. Um, you, you always want to make sure that um, the pharmacist provides easy open bottles uh, if individuals have arthritis. Uh, but just keep in mind that those are not child-proof um, safety caps, so keep them up and out of the way of children. And then the next one uh, is to tell the healthcare provider if you suspect the loved one's forgetting to take a medication. So really the core of medication adherence is taking the medication as prescribed. So it can be confusing um, if there's multiple medications, how often do they take them, um, do they take them with food, do they not take them with food. So always, always uh, confer with your senior's healthcare professional about the appropriate level of medication assistance your loved one needs. And then the last one is to consider a caregiver. Um, you know, Home Instead is a, is a wonderful resource, so you can always reach out to a local Home Instead office. Um, but sometimes you need to take that extra step in, in um, helping those that may feel overwhelmed or unable to manage their medications. And then the next slide is an acronym for SIMPLE. So um, the core of this is just really to understand that uh, as simple as you can make a patient's medication profile, the more likely they are to be adherent to it. So we'll start with S, which is simplify the regimen, uh, prescribing long-acting dosage forms rather than immediate-acting dosage forms, um, makes it 
uh, more possible for individuals to take medications because they only take them once a day versus twice, three times, four times, even up to five times a day. Um, so that's a real, a real big help if you can simplify that. Also, um, we know pills, uh, when I was young, we called them horse pills, but they were just, you know, big, long, oblong pills. Uh, so that can be a barrier, so small oral solid medications rather than large ones. And then also taking one pill to reach a dosage rather than two pills. So, for example, take a 10 milligram tablet to get to 10 milligrams rather than two 5 milligram tablets. That also drives adherence. Uh, the next letter is I, so impart knowledge. So patients, as we mentioned earlier, who understand what they're taking the medication for and why it's important to their health are much more likely to be compliant. Um, modify M, modify patient beliefs and human behavior. Um, patients may not believe it's important to take their medications as prescribed, like the example that we, we mentioned earlier. And my, my grandmother fell into this category. She would always ta stop taking medications after she felt better. Um, so if you explain to them how long they need to be taking them and what they're for, that will really help the education process and adherence. P is to provide communication and trust. So effective communication definitely leads to better health outcomes. When the patient and the provider, the physician, are on the same page, the patient really trusts that their health is in good hands, and that's important um, when you need to take medications prescribed by that physician. So uh, leave the bias is L. Uh, patients typically want to take their medications like they're supposed to. Um, so because they are not, don't, don't put that bias out there. You know, go ahead and help them. They may feel overwhelmed by the number of medications or not fully understand the instructions. So help them out even if, if they are not taking their medications properly. And the last one, E, evaluate adherence, which Lakeland mentioned a little bit earlier, but I'm going to build upon it once again. And, and just really, um, it's the proverbial pick up the rock and look underneath. You know, once a month, ask them if they're taking their medications. Look at when they last got their prescriptions refilled. Are, are their, their pill bottles full? Um, you know, when was the last uh, expiration, when's that expiration date on the bottle oftentimes is a good indicator as to is this outdated or not. So um, a frequent check-in on how many meds are left and if refills are being dispensed are key indicators of adherence. So now I'll turn it back over to Lakeland. Thank you so much, Kyle. I love that acronym of SIMPLE. It really does kind of help simplify it kind of is a good reminder for us all on how we can help older adults we're working with really simplify and make their more medication routine more simple. Um, but I also did want to just highlight a few communication tips for families and for working with older adults on the topic of medication uh, management. Want to be important that uh, or be reminded um, that it's important to remain helpful and positive. We want to try to put ourselves in their shoes. Maybe uh, try to think what could be the barriers um, that are preventing them from adhering to their medication uh, management and how could you be more helpful. And don't forget to listen. So often uh, we just make assumptions or we think we know what's best, but hear what the, the older adult has to say about their medication management and what their concerns are. And then make sure that there's that clear communication between the physician and the patient, the pharmacy, and then make the older adult patient feel part of the medication management solution. In those cases, they're more likely to participate in the medication management if they're helping to create the solution. And then as we go to questions, I'm going to leave this resource slide up here. Um, there's great conversation starters around medication at Let's Talk About Rx.com. Um, if you want to learn about how to administer medication, safemedication.com is a great resource. Uh, if you want more information on Simple Meds, uh, you can go to simplemedsrx.com um, and medication reminder services. Uh, and emergency situations, those resources are up there. But I know we have about five more minutes left for questions. So I want to thank you all for tuning in. Uh, thank Kyle for his great advice. And so, uh, Steve, I'll turn it over to you for a few questions. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Lakeland and Kyle. Great presentation. Um, let's get to the questions. I'll throw a few quick ones in here. Um, uh, first question here for you, what are high-risk medications that seniors should not take or be prescribed? 
That's a that's a great question, Lakeland. I'll I'll jump on that one. There's a list out there that um, is accessible to anyone on the internet. It's called Beer's Criteria. It's spelled like the drink, but it has nothing to do with it. Uh, B e e r s, and it's a list of medications that shouldn't be taken um, if you're, uh, I believe, over 65 years old. And a lot of it has to do with benzodiazepines, um, heart medications. Uh, so you can full, find a comprehensive list out on the internet. Okay, and we had a couple questions here, which I'm going to kind of uh, jam all into one, um, about the 10 warning signs. Can you give the name of the 10 warning signs as well as the source of those 10 warning signs? Yes, yeah, so the 10 warning signs are uh, when medications are to blame for health issues. And Dr. Jane Potter was the physician that helped helped us develop that list, and you can find the, that list at letstalkaboutrx.com. Um, so we did a public education campaign a couple years ago all about medication management, um, and so that, along with other great resources, are at that, that site, letstalkaboutrx.com. All right, great, thank you. Um, next question, what recommendations might you offer to avoid risk of medication errors that can occur when transitioning into or out of a hospital? Lakeland, like you want me to take that one? I'll, I'll, um, sure. I'll give you a couple here real quick. So um, it's, it's interest, that's a really good question, and um, I think it's one of the biggest pain points in our healthcare system today is transitional care, uh, you know, going from a rehab facility or a long-term care facility or a hospital back to the home. Um, and, you know, oftentimes some tips, Consider a caregiver um, that can really help the transition, but really nailing down the medication list upon discharge and then following up with that patient's primary care physician within two weeks of discharge to make sure that the medications that will be taken on an ongoing basis are prescribed. Um, and because oftentimes the formulary at the facility is different than what the patient's insurance will pay for uh, out of facility. So um, there's sometimes some complications there, but um, always following up with the primary care physician is a big tip as well. Those are great Thanks. tips, Kyle. I was just making a note to myself. I think we need to add more information next year on, on the transition from, hosp from the hospital and, and medication management. So thank you, whoever submitted that question. Uh, we'll add more on that next year. Okay, great. Next question. Uh, in cases of dementia, the patient may flat out refuse medication. What options do you have once this begins to happen routinely? I can take that one. Um, when when an, an older adult who has dementia is flat out refusing to take medication, um, I, and if it's happening routinely, I would suggest that uh, the the way in which the medications are being delivered, um, we need to evaluate that approach. So the tips that I gave, um, I, I went to a, um, a speaker and she talked for like a half hour on this entire topic. And a lot of times uh, when someone, especially in the more advanced stages of the disease, are refusing to take their medications, it's because uh, maybe if they're in a living uh, facility, a community setting, you know, the med tech is on a very – you know, strict schedule. She has to get medications out to so many people, uh, he or she, and um, so they might not take as much time needed to um, introduce yourself, uh, make sure that they know who you are. I'm the nurse. Um, I'm here to give you your medication. Um, here's water to wash it down. With taking those steps um, to really make the older adult feel comfortable, um, or and be more, you might be more specific. This is the the pill that helps uh, with your back pain and point to your back. So kind of, again, explaining to the individual um, what uh, the medication is for in very simplified terms. And you don't have to give the name of the medication. Uh, but keeping them um, uh, informed of what's happening kind of step by step might make them more open to um, a medication um, or might make them more open to taking the medication. Now, if you, you if you evaluate that process and it's not working, then it's time to talk with the physician about um, the medication, um, what it what its 
purposes? Um, is it necessary for them to take it? And if it is, perhaps there's another form of the medication. Perhaps it could be administered in a powder form that could go into their food, something of that sort. So um, I, would, I would evaluate the process of which is being used to give the medication, and then if that can't be altered uh, and it's not effective, then go to the physician for an alternate form of the medication. All right, well, uh, unfortunately, we are just about out of time here. It's just about 11 o'clock. But Lakeland and Kyle, I want to thank you for a great presentation today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great week, everyone. Mm -hmm.